Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer on Webinar, Lead Handling Like a Rockstar. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. Today's webinar is being presented by Dealer on. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer on, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive website platform. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that Dealer on is still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. Does your website company guarantee you a 50% lead leads or your money back? Maybe you should check us out at our gorgeous brand new Dealer On website at DealerOn.com. <laughs> also, Dealer On is hosting another Top Golf event. This time it's going to be in Dallas, Texas on Wednesday, October 5th. Yes, it is Google. It is golf and it is cocktails. That, my friend, <laughs> that's what we call a recipe for awesomeness. So if you'd like more information on this amazing event, please check out the tiny URL on your screen, tinyurl.com slash TG Dallas webinar. Oh, and I should mention, all of this amazingness, yeah, it's free. It's free. Just get to Dallas, Texas. We hope to see you there. We have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Bobby Heron as our presenter today. Bobby Heron is the Director of Dealer Marketing for Zmot Auto and is responsible for the creation and implementation of digital marketing strategies and conversion best practices for her dealer clients. Utilizing market information and cutting-edge technology to increase consumer engagement and create targeted in-market buyer opportunities, Zmot is best known for providing unparalleled tailor-designed digital sales solutions, one-on-one -on -one sales attribution, and regional exclusivity for automotive dealerships within the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Bobby has spent over 16 years enjoying a diverse automotive career and various responsibilities within a retail dealership, including general manager, before coming to Zmot. She is a very popular presenter at numerous conferences, including Digital Dealer, Women in Automotive, and Driving Sales, and she's a guest lecturer at Northwood University, and a named winner of the 2015 Automotive News 40 Under 40. Bobby can be reached at bheron at zmotauto.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference, and please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Oh, and guess what? Oh, our good friends at Zmot, they're giving away an amazing prize today on the webinar. One. Lucky webinar attendee is going to win an iPhone 7. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the one that was just released a couple weeks ago, that one. What an awesome prize, especially with the holidays right around the corner. Now, you have to be on the live broadcast to win it, though, so stay tuned. And who knows, you might be the one walking away with this amazing prize today. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey. So fill it out, because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience. We want to know what you think. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation, so please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Bobby Heron at Sign on the Line. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. So let's get started. Let's learn all about Lead handling like a rock star. Bobby Heron, my rock star, how are you? I am fantastic today, Eliana, and super excited to be able to have this conversation with everybody. I'm super excited. This is an, an amazing topic, and I know you have a lot to get to. Without further ado, tell the audience the kinds of things we're going to be looking forward to hearing about today. That sounds great. So today we have a really diverse audience. We have, uh, when I was looking through who had registered, we had a pretty equal split between people who are in the internet department, on the floor handling leads, sales managers who were looking for information on how to better build processes, and general managers and dealer principals who said, hey, tell me how to get a foundation together. So today we're going to talk a little bit about all of it, which is why we're going to have an awesome Q&A at the end as well. So. Our objectives today, some of the things we're going to cover, are getting out of the lead versus buyer mindset, which is something I talk about a lot, how to build a successful foundation for a department. And when I say BDC or department, whoever is handling the opportunities that are coming in is who I'm talking to. Uh, start at start. A goal without an action plan is just a dream. Every, everybody knows I love a good meme. Uh, increasing sales through customer experience, 
then we're going to get to the giveaway and then the question and answer session, Eliana. I love it. Let's, so, where, do we, where do we begin? Without, <laughs> well, without further ado, uh, let's spend a quick moment talking about the difference between generation and conversion so that as we have this conversation today, it makes sense to everybody. So generation is the side of our business with the marketing. This is where we spend over $55 billion a year in automotive marketing. And that's according to Google. I'm not just coming up with that number. But what we're going to focus on today is what do we do with that traffic, those opportunities, once they come in. There's so many stores that are spending so much money to bring in opportunities, but then nobody is out there saying, here's how you're going to convert them. <clears throat> There's a lot of really great trainers and consultants and companies that will come in and teach you uh, these things and give you all the information that you need to be able to do them. But internally, how do you find resources to be able to help you? So I'm going to share that information with you today as well. All right. Well, the first thing we're going to do is watch a quick video clip because I am a huge fan of videos, and I think <laughs> it helps people learn when they can see a visual. <laughs> so we tested this a lot. So uh, the volume is all the way up, and this will take just a moment. If you guys are a fan of New Girl or if you've seen it, this is a good show. Are we looking at the owner of a new used car? Yeah, oh, what? Well, Mitch, Billy from Car County started playing for the time of the single of me as soon as I walked in the door. He called me Double Face. They're putting out all the world in the trunk for my shopping bag. Then he explained four-wheel drive to me. I don't need four-wheel drive explained. Very well named. I'd love to program champion. Okay, you know how you get back to this guy? Huh. You do the entire thing online. You set up an email address, but under a dude's name. Yes. <laughs> Eliana, were you able to hear that okay? It was pretty low, so let's just get everyone the gist of that video just in case they couldn't All hear right. it, okay? So if you guys haven't seen this video, what this is is a clip from New Girl from a new season, the new season that's out and a new episode that just came out. And basically what she's saying is she's gone into the dealership, she met with a gentleman in the dealership. She calls him a misogynistic pig when she's saying it. But that's not the point of the clip. The important part of the clip is her friend says to her, hey, I know what you should do. You should go online and make a fake, a fake email and pretend you're a guy and send it in as an internet lead. That's exactly what she tells her, right? So we have this, uh, we have this stereotype across the business about what kind of people we are and how we handle things. So one of the things we're going to focus today is on customer experience. But we're going to do that because we do have people out there. We have people that are creating television shows for massive audiences that are saying, hey, go online and fake who you are. Say you're somebody else. Give different information. And do those things so that your experience is on point and you don't have to deal with any other nonsense. So I want to address the elephant in the room, which is that there are times when things come in that aren't real opportunities. That does not mean you can't turn them into one. Okay? So let's start with perception is reality. <clears throat> Eliana, did your mom ever tell you that perception is reality? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I did have a um, a few uh, like uh, teachers in college, and that would they always said that perception is reality, and you have to. It's the truth, right? So what happens is we have customers who come in through the showroom door or call in through a phone, and we say things like, um, "Hey, could you talk to uh, you talk to Dave on that red truck?" Hey, uh, what, about, uh, what about the lady with the red hat? What about the lady that came in earlier and she was looking at the charger? We turn opportunities into people when we can talk to them or when they're in our store. But when they come in through a digital opportunity or a quote unquote lead, and that's what I want to get away from is calling them that, we have a really strong tendency to say, well, did you get all the leads out of the bucket? Did you answer the leads yesterday? Did you see those leads this morning? What we're doing from the top down is we're making it acceptable for that opportunity to be different than the one that comes in or the one that calls us on the phone. And the minute that we separate the two, it becomes an uh, afterthought, right? So we have to first start to change our mindset. So my first challenge to you is that you stop using the word lead. I'll use it intermittently in this session just for a reference point, but in your store when you're talking, turn those opportunities into people. Those People are what cause sales, right? So that's the very first thing I want you to think of. And when we think about mindset, it's a we've always done it that way kind of deal. So let's get away from that and get started. Now we're going to go fast through a lot of this because this is a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So, Eliana? 
Ah, first thing, we, first thing we need to do is get you our very first poll question of the day. We have a number of these coming your way today. We'd love it if you'd get involved. Now, there's a lot of you on today's call, so please let your vote be heard. We want to know which of the following terms does your store currently use in reference to incoming leads? Please select one of the following. Do you just call them leads? Do you call each one an opportunity? Is each one a potential customer? Do you refer to each of those by the individual customer's name? Or you know what? It depends on how much coffee we've had that morning. Whatever the answer is, we want to know. The votes are coming in fast. Bobby, wait till you see this. We want to know which of the following terms does your store currently use in reference to incoming leads? Yes, we call them leads. We call them opportunities. We call them potential customers. We call them by the customer's name. Or, I don't know, it depends on how awake we are that day. All right. Once we get, uh, wow, we already have a majority of the votes in. This is awesome. By the way, Bobby, have I told you lately that the Dealer on webinar audience is amazing? They are. They, they are, are amazing. They always come through for me, and they're so smart. All right. Um, I'll give you another couple seconds, and then we'll close this poll and share the results with everyone. Bobby, you ready for this? I am ready, Eliana. <laughs> All right. Ooh. We just got a spike in votes. <laughs> Somebody wrote, thank you. I know we're amazing. Bravo. Thank you, Chris. All right, here we go. Let's close this poll and share the results. All right, the majority, 59% of today's audience say, we call them leads. What does everyone else call them, right? 13% of today's audience said, each one is an opportunity. 10% of today's audience say, each one is a potential customer. Another 10% of today's audience say that they refer to each of them by the individual customer's name. And then the remaining 8% of today's audience says, yeah, it depends on how much coffee we've had that morning. All right. Bobby. <laughs> I love the audience. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because it's 8%, so you know there was a lot of people who voted. <laughs> <laughs> that last yeah, one. Yeah, no, I love the honesty on that. Okay, so Bobby, is there a right or wrong answer to this, or is, does this go back to perception being reality? If perception is reality, the right answer is whatever you call the customer that walks through your door or the phone call that comes in when you're referencing that, that's the same mindset I want you to use with the people that are coming in digitally. Whether you call them by their name, well, you call them an opportunity, which is what I prefer, uh, but that's just a preference. Just stop thinking of them as not being a real customer because that person that sent in that digital opportunity is the same person who walks through the door out of nowhere that you spend four hours with and get everything done for and then have to go into a close with. It's the same person. It's only different when you allow yourself to think that it is. Wow. That is really turning everything upside down because I don't think anyone who sees uh, you know, a walk-in calls them a lead. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> we've done that as an industry. We've done that. We've changed it from, I mean, years ago we would say, we would have receptionists sit at the desk and they would say, hey, there was a lady in today that had a purple hat and a green t-shirt and I wrote it down. You remember we used to have these big pieces of paper on these desks and you wrote down weather and you wrote down their names. And at the end of the day, you would have a conversation and really great dealerships still have David deal meetings where they go over who came in the day before, and why didn't they buy? But very rarely do they have a meeting that says, hey, these are the opportunities that came in six days ago. Where are we at with those? Not yesterday, six days ago. So it is, it is very interesting to look at it and see how our mindset actually works. And a lot of what we do in sales is control and psychology. And it's the same thing with uh, digital opportunities as well. I like, All right. I like that. All right, audience, we have three more poll questions coming your way in just a bit. So sit tight, and we're looking forward to hearing your votes on those as well. Bobby? All right, so let's address some of the questions that came in. I posed questions to all different groups to say, what do you want to know? I needed things that we could talk about today that were um, basic enough that new people would get them, but progressive enough that people who have been doing this for a while would take something away too. So the very first thing I want to address for managers, uh, dealership owners, actually, you know what, anybody in the dealership is, why do we fail? Regardless of what position it is, whether it's a BDC, it's a salesperson, it's a hybrid, it's a set to sell, we fail for three reasons. So I want everybody to really think about this, but the first one is the wrong people 
in the wrong position. Right? Stop giving people jobs because they can work a computer. That doesn't mean you can communicate with somebody non-verbally. And this is something that people uh, really get frustrated with in dealerships. The wrong people in the wrong positions, lack of performing processes, meaning somebody handed you some templates in a process that goes into your CRM and said, here you go, here's best practice, but it doesn't match what you do on your floor. And it doesn't match what's best in your market. <clears throat> so lack of performing processes, complacent implementation and accountability. I can't tell you how many times I hear, and you guys know this if you're listening, how many times have you heard this? I swear I made that call. It's just not in the CRM. <laughs> uh, that doesn't count then, right? We're going to talk about that as we go. But if you agree as a team, whether it's the, the BDC team, it's the sales team, it's the management team, to put something in place, inspect what you expect and hold people accountable. And that means holding yourself accountable as well. It's not okay to put something in place and then not follow through on it. So again, reasons that we fail. People, process, accountability. All right. I don't know why this keeps coming up, Eliana, but we're just going to keep working with it here. I can see it at the bottom. Uh, and I'll switch screens down. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about... <laughs> Let's talk about magnifying strength. Uh, here's a big thing. We're going to go through a couple of these real quick first before we get into some of the handling techniques. But your people are good at one of three things, typically. So you're going to have people who are great on the phone. Eliana, I don't know if you've ever wanted to go on a really good diet plan, but if you really <laughs> want a good diet plan, all you have to do is listen to a dealership phone call. This will make you throw up. It's terrible. Oh, that's it's awesome, so Bobby. <laughs> So oh, true. I'm telling you, I, I've been in and out of dealerships for 17 years, and there are people who are really great. And then there are people who are not, and that is okay. You should always be giving everybody as much training as you can. But if you really looked at your sales floor and said, it's not about fairness, it's about getting it done, then getting it done means taking the people who are strong in one area and coaching them stronger and stronger and stronger all the time and saying, hey, this is my group of five people that are really good on the phone. Guess what they do? They answer the phones. These are my people who are really good at nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication is not an easy thing. It's words on paper. It's a series of letters strung together to make a word, and it only has the power that's defined by the person reading it. Right? So you have to be very good at being able to have a conversation to handle internet opportunities that come in through email. Same thing with the showroom floor. I learned in our business from veterans in our business. My mentor was a 70-year-old man who told me the best stories and taught me things that I would have never learned had I not watched. But he knew the art of the clothes. And the art of the clothes is not something you learn overnight. It's something where you mirror. You're glamoring words. You're having conversations. You're building rapport. It's like dating. You're bringing the wall down, right? So let's magnify those strengths when we really think about who should be doing what part of that. And if you look around right now, you already know who those people are, regardless of position. That's something we want to keep a strong focus on. All right. Now, this is never a pleasant conversation. People always say to me, do we need to talk about this? We do need to talk about this. It's not about if you have a BDC or don't, OK? It's about if you build two separate teams inside of a store, and you put a BDC or you put the internet team you put these people in one room, and then you have a sales floor out here. And then on Friday, you have your sales meeting, and the whole sales team goes in. They're all kinds of, you know, they're like, oh, i got to go to this meeting. There's, there's a $100 spiff, and we're going to talk about cars, and we're going to do walk-arounds. Is the internet department or the people answering those opportunities present when that is happening? Because it's not okay to not have your whole place function as one team. You're one team moving in one direction. And if you're not, you're broken. The fighting between departments, uh, and rightfully so sometimes, right? The internet people on this call will understand the things that I'm going to say right now, which is, I didn't put my notes in. I mean, I meant to hit showroom visit and log them, right? I thought for sure they would do that. Uh, the salespeople say things like, why do they tell them that's the payment? Why aren't they, why aren't they prepping them before? Why is this happening? The frustrations that each department feels, each department feels. You're not the only one frustrated. So if you have a separation on your floor, the very most important thing I can tell you to start is to fix it. That is the foundation of the house you are building. And if it has cracks in it, you cannot put up walls, right? So let's keep that in mind as well. All right, Eliana, 
we have another poll question. Yes, we do. Question number two is on the screen now. We want to know what's happening at your dealership. So the question is, who currently handles the incoming internet opportunities at your dealership? Please select one of the following answers. Is it the sales staff, the sales manager, the BDC appointment setters handle it for the sales staff, the BDC handles it set to sell, or you use an off-site call center or a third-party vendor to handle those incoming internet opportunities. We want to know. Um, now, Danielle wrote in, none of these options apply. I'm curious, Danielle, what's going on over there? Oh, I am too. <laughs> and then um, uh, Wade says, Gladstone Toyota is not a BDC, and we all work as a team. If I'm double booked, I can Good use... job. <laughs> if, I, if I'm booked, I can use another internet rep or a floor rep if I choose, which is nice. Oh, great. <laughs> Um, I love that. Good job. Now, Danielle didn't write back in. Oh, wait, here we go. She just did. We have a dedicated internet sales manager that handles appointments from A to Z, oh, A to C or A to Z, with a TO to salespeople. Oh, my. Which one should she choose? Awesome. That's a set to sell hybrid method. Uh, so she's, he's setting the appointment and then handing off the end. So it's still kind of the same thing. So I would go with set to sell, but... Uh, we can talk a little bit more about that later, too. Okay. All right. Uh, Eric wrote in, we have a dedicated Internet sales department. Love it. Okay. Um, let me see. Trevor says, we have a specific Internet squad who does both. Do you mean set to sell? <laughs> uh, floor traffic and Internet. Uh, Wendy says, our BDC members are on the sales staff, the digital sales staff, also take leads. Trevor says, we are ninjas. <laughs> Oh, I love a ninja, Trevor. Go you. And I love a squad, and I love that you used that word. You could hashtag that. We'd be all good. And that's the thing, right? It doesn't matter what you call it. You can call it anything. From here on out, instead of saying BDC or sales team, which is why I wanted this poll question, this poll question I'm just going to refer to Internet team being the separation between the sales and the uh, digital opportunities so that when we're talking about it, it makes sense for everybody. Okay, so apparently a lot of people are doing a hybrid, or they're describing a hybrid. So which, if they're a hybrid, which one would you want them to select? So if you're a hybrid situation uh, and you're doing both and you're a set-to-sell person, that, that means that the sales team is handling it. Okay. If you're selling the car, you're, at, you're part of the sales team. I love it. All right. Well, actually, we have almost everyone voted on this one. Audience, you guys rock. You guys are rock stars. Okay, let's close this poll and share these results. Check this out, everyone. Okay, a third of today's audience, 33%, said the sales staff handles those incoming internet opportunities at the dealership. Only 3% said it was the sales manager, but the majority, wow, almost half, 48% of today's audience said it's the BDC appointment setters who handle it for the sales staff. 15% of today's audience say the BDC handles it set to sell, and only 1% of today's audience says that they use an off-site call center or a third-party vendor. Bobby, does that help you out at all? Yeah, it absolutely does. It's going to change the way that we talk about this conversation, actually. Um, and let me be really clear, too. I am not going to tell you that you need a BDC or that you need hybrid people. What I'm going to tell you is you have to look at those strengths on your team, and then you identify within your own source what's the best method for you and teach from there. So it does help me, Eliana, and we're going to get rolling then. Let's do it. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So first thing I want you guys to know is start at start. This is something we talk about a lot. Where are you now? If you don't know where you are now, then you can't coach in each one of these areas. So here's what I mean by this. Um, it's okay for somebody to come in and say, well, you're only you know, you're closing at 10%. Let's work on your closing. You're closing at 13%. Oh, that's great news. Um, how are you doing in your, in your appointment set? The problem is there are different sections, right? So there are how many leads do you have? How many leads that you had did you contact? How many of you contacted did you set an appointment for? Of those appointments, how many showed? And then how many sold? Those numbers aren't a governor or a babysitter. Those numbers are so that you can identify where the area of opportunity is within your own segment, within yourself, to then start coaching in that area. If you don't need help closing, then we don't need to spend time on that. But if you need help getting engagement between the time that you 
try to contact someone and they come back to you, that's the focus there, right? Is it on confirmations or shows? We're going to go through those things. And then where do you want to be? These are the numbers that I'd like to see you at as a maximum number. This is your stretch goal. This is your end point, right? When you start in the beginning, you're looking at a 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, and you can ask 500 different people in the industry and everybody will give you a different answer. Oh, you should use this mathematical equation. Let's just keep it easy. It should be 50%. 50% of the opportunities that come in, you should be able to contact. 50% of the ones you contact, you should be able to set an appointment for. 50% of the ones that set an appointment should show in your showroom, and 50% of those should sell. That's your starting point. That's your start at start. This is where you want to be afterwards. 75, 75, 80, and 80. And before anybody right now listening to this goes, oh, that's unattainable, it is not unattainable. It is not. I have done this for a long time, and I know many stores right now that are doing this every day with and without my help. So you can get there. It's all in the experience. Speaking of experience, let's talk about mindset and how buildings aren't special. Your dealership, and take a deep breath, right? Your dealership is not special. It's not special. It's a building. It houses inventory that any other dealer can carry, trade-ins that any other dealer can buy, payments that any other dealer can give. The only thing that's different, the only thing that sets you apart is the experience that you offer, and that starts with the people that are in your building. If you have ever had a bad experience at a restaurant and you've said to yourself, I am never going back, that was absolutely terrible. Was it the building that did it? Was it the owner? It was the people inside of it that formulated your opinion, right? So keeping in mind as we go, buildings are not special, people are. That brings us to where the magic happens from the very first time that you contact or engage with a customer, and that is the experience. So you think about Disney for a minute. Disney pumps the smell of popcorn into their parks every morning at 5 a.m., every morning at 5 a.m., and then hourly, each one of these things occurs, and they do that because the smell of popcorn takes you back to a beautiful place in childhood, right? It was a fair, you were maybe at a ballpark, you walked into a dealership and smelled popcorn, that's why we have popcorn in dealerships, people, it did not start out because it was just easy to have popcorn there, right? But that's the experience, and that starts from the get-go even when you're talking to a customer. So before you can change the experience in your store, before you can respond in less than five minutes, before you can have conversations that engage people, you first need to know what is your why buy. And I feel very strongly about the why buy messaging because people say to me all the time, what should I put in the email? What should, I, um, what should I put in this template? What should go back to this customer? I will challenge you to sit down with your entire management team right now and ask them if all things were equal, why should somebody buy at your store? And when they say, we have a lot of inventory, that's not allowed. The internet has a lot of inventory. You don't. The internet does. If you're family owned, that's awesome. I love, I personally love that places are past their generations and people are able to pick that up. But your customer does not care. It does not matter to them that you were family owned. Now, you might get the exception. There's always the exception to the rule, but that's not always the case. So one of the biggest questions I hear from people is, how do we identify our supply by then? And I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll send you a sticker if you can go have this meeting and you guys can come up with five why buys for your store because it's the progressive dealers that have done this. And so good for you if you're there. There's two different ways to get this information if you're not sure how. I'm going to show you a video that's going to give you some examples of some great why buys. Okay, we're not going to listen through the whole thing, but I am going to show you some of it. The second thing is, listen to what your customers are saying. If you don't know why somebody should buy from you, how can they know it? So get online and read your reviews and read why they're buying from you. So Eliana, we're going to listen to this video real quick, and you just tell me if you have any problems hearing it while it's playing, and I'll pause it to explain instead. Okay. All right. Oh. You've probably heard about our great customer reviews, so we'd like to show you why our customers love and trust Parkway Honda. Our customers have voiced their opinion that in 2015, Parkway Honda was awarded the best Honda dealership in Canada by dealer Raider. Buying a vehicle is one of the most significant purchases our customers make. We take great pride in the vehicle itself and the customer service we provide. Parkway Honda holds the largest new vehicle inventory in the GTA. Most importantly, our product specialists know how to find exactly the right vehicle for your lifestyle. You are not just buying a car. You're entering into a long-term relationship. We have in-house car rental service, complimentary shuttle service, a delicious cafe, and a lounge to be put with you. 
computers, bring them both to the Wi-Fi to make every visit as comfortable and convenient as possible. Customers love shopping in their new Hesha showroom. Okay, Eliana. When we think about this video for a minute, did you hear him say you're not just enter you're not just buying a car. You're entering into a long term relationship. Did you hear that? I did, I did, I liked it. <laughs> he just wiped you up. That's what just happened. He was like, Wait a minute, I you're special to me. Right? <laughs> when we think about handling yeah, oh yeah, when we think about handling opportunities Really think about it like dating, or think about it like courting somebody, or like you're, if you're married for a long time, think about it as that date night, right? People do not buy cars because they know, like, and trust someone. We have been teaching that for years, but I would say if that was true, none of us would have lost an opportunity for our family member, our neighbor, our friend to another dealership, and it's happened to everybody. People buy vehicles, or they buy big purchases from people who make them feel special, right? So. All things considered equal, this, this dealership right here is telling their customers, here's why you should buy from us. And it's a really good example. So if you get a chance, take a look at it on YouTube. It's Parkway Honda in Canada. All right, Eliana, we have another poll question. Poll question number three is on the screen now. Yes, vote, please. Now, the last poll question we asked, who takes care of those incoming Internet opportunities? Now, we want to know, how are those Internet opportunities distributed within your store? Are they round robin, the bucket system? Are they handed out by a manager? You're not really sure how it's decided who gets which opportunity, or oh, it's like Hunger Games at our dealership. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close the poll and share the results, and the votes are coming in fast. All right, so how are the Internet opportunities distributed within your store? By the way, I'm also looking for great questions from you, our valued audience, for local resident rock star Bobby Heron today. So if you have questions about maybe something that's happening at your dealership and you'd like her opinion on it, or the best way, in fact, to do something or, um, or just have a really strong comment maybe about something that she's already said, hey, put it in the, in the questions feature and send it over. We're going to be getting all of that great stuff during the Q&A session after her presentation and after we give away a prize. All right. Uh, votes are still coming in. Bobby, are you ready for this? Do you Are you ready to learn how internet opportunities are distributed within most of these stores? I am. <laughs> All right, everyone. Let's close this poll and share these results. All right, the majority, 46% of today's audience, say they do round robin. 20% of today's audience say they use the bucket system. 26%, which is actually higher than I thought it would be, say they're handed out by a manager. Only 2% of today's mm -hmm. audience say they're not sure how the internet opportunities are spread out. And 6% of today's audience, yeah, they're like those coffee people two questions ago. It's like Hunger Games at our dealership. We fight over everything. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bobby, you have any comment on this? Oh, I certainly do. Okay, so I want you to go back to what we talked about with mindset. Um, there's a couple different reasons why this happens. I'm going to share it with you, and I'm going to tell you what my opinion is on it. And please, when you're writing in your questions, challenge me if you don't agree. Uh, we learn from each other. Here's the thing with bucket versus round robin. So round robin happens in a lot of stores because it's easy. Because we can say, oh, well, we have 10 people on that can handle them, and it's going to round robin between them, and that's great. And look, I'm not known for sugarcoating things. I'm known for creating buy-in. And so I'm not going to gloss this over, but I'm out on the fair game right? I'm out on that. If, there's a couple different things that happen with a round robin. First of all, if somebody's with a customer and that customer comes in as an opportunity, a new one, so let's say John is at his desk with two customers and it's John's turn on the round robin, and then Jamie comes in on the round robin with a question on a car, and this is a hot buyer. She's excited. She's on your website. She's ready to have a question answered. But guess what? John's with a customer for three hours, so Jamie's going to have to go ahead and wait. But then you have a good store that comes in and says, well, after 10 minutes, somebody else grabs it. Uh, 10 minutes is way too long. And I'm not saying if that's the only option you have. It's terrible. It's just not a great one. The second thing I want to address is managers handing out opportunities. I don't know a lot of managers that are trained in handling those opportunities, but I know a lot of managers that are extremely busy closing deals, working payments, ordering inventory, 
not paying attention to a CRM system every five seconds that are handing them out. And a lot of times that happens so that they can make sure there's accountability for them getting answered in the first place, but it can be a stumbling block. We just have to train and empower our people. Um, I am a fan of the bucket system because I'm all about some hunger games. If you're going to put the work in and you're bringing your A game, then good for you if you get to claim 10 leads in a day, as long as you contact the customer the minute you get it. If you don't have time to take it, don't take it. But outside of that, hunger games it up. Get to it. Because if you'll call somebody on a Sunday, I promise you, you'll get a better result. And if you're willing to do that, then I'm willing to let you work it. Now that being said, if you have a sales staff that's handling leads, they shouldn't be handling more than 30 to 40 leads or opportunities in a month because the long-term follow-up will stack. Likewise with the BDC, I believe in 125 opportunities. I believe in a long-term follow-up process, and we're going to go into that a little bit more in just a moment. So bucket system is something that I am a huge fan of. After seven years of building over 21 BDCs that are both hybrid set to sell and training a sales staff in over 22 stores to handle opportunities, the bucket system has always been what I have seen as the most successful. All right, talking about that, stop allowing excuses. Stop saying that something is okay when it is not because it is easier to allow complacency. Handling things like this in coaching is like having children, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean it with all the love in the world, but I mean there needs to be consequence when something doesn't happen. And the internet people on this call will agree with me that the salespeople have to have consequence when notes aren't put in, when things aren't handled, and likewise the internet department as well. Okay? The leads are bad. So we're going to go fast from here because we're limited on our time. So the leads are bad. I hear this all the time from people. Well, those leads are bad. That source is bad. That doesn't work. This isn't it. Okay. All right, listen. Very rarely are the leads actually bad. What you mean to say is they're not buying right now. What you mean to say is this source gives me a higher funnel opportunity. But the minute we say, the minute we say in front of somebody else, those leads, those leads are bad, then the, every lead that comes in under that source is automatically identified as being a bad lead, and that is crap. Those people went online, they gave you their information, they gave you their phone number, they gave you what they were looking at. That's not a bad lead. I'm not sharing my information with you if I don't actually have an anticipated result. So please stop telling yourself that. And maybe you have one source that's really bad, and if it is and they're not real and those aren't real opportunities, get rid of it, but that is the exception and not the rule. One of the things I want everybody to keep in mind is the Ferris wheel approach. So the average buyer in most markets is buying up to 180 days from the time that they initially notice that they want a vehicle. They saw it in their neighbor's driveway. They saw it on a commercial. Most manufacturers will tell you 60 to 90 days for new cars. Uh, so you may have heard that. And they'll tell you that anywhere from 0 to 14 days is the hot point for answering them. Oh, they're super interested in 0 or 14 days. What if you thought about it the way we used to think about sales as a Ferris wheel approach? If you're six months out, you deserve every ounce of my attention. I am going to make you feel special. You are going to want to wipe me up before we're done with this. By the end of the night, that's your intention. The reason that I'm doing that is because I'm loading you onto a Ferris wheel so that when I get to your spot, you're coming off at the right time. Because if I start your experience from the very beginning the way that it's supposed to be, then I don't have to deal with that. Eliana, we've got our last poll question here. Yes, we do. Last poll question is on the screen now. And here it is. So after you've gotten your internet opportunity from a potential buyer, what is your first step? You personally, what is your first step? Please select one of the following. Do you make a phone call? Do you write an email? Do you send out an email with video? Do you send a text? Or do you do whatever it takes to stop the clock? Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. So, once again, after you get your internet opportunity and you have this potential buyer, you have all the information in front of you, what is your first step? Phone call, email, email with video, text, or whatever it takes to stop the clock. Bobby wants to know. <laughs> yeah, and Bobby wants to know the truth, too, not what your store process is. What are you really doing? Because the next situation that we're going to go over here is, is best practice and what will really help you. So what are you really doing when you're responding to that? 
Yeah, this is totally anonymous. No one's going to know how you, but just tell us the truth because it really helps us out, okay? We really yeah. want to know. <laughs> so after you receive an internet opportunity from a potential buyer, what's your, you personally, what is your first step? Phone call, email, email with video, text, or whatever it takes to stop the clock. All right. Um, also, we got some really wonderful questions in from the audience. Thank you so much. We're going to be getting to that Q&A session very shortly. Let's close this poll right now and share these results. All right, the majority, Bobby, 52% of today's audience say phone call is the very first thing they do. 32% of job, they, guys. All right, 32% of today's audience, almost a third, say they do email. Only 5% of today's audience say they do email with video first. 1% says the first thing they do is text and 11% of today's audience say they do whatever it takes to stop the clock. Bobby, got any comment on that? I do, I do. Let's roll into these. I'm going to give you the comments as we go through some of these best practice options. Um, so here's how we best practice super experienced, hardcore, turn these into opportunity. Turn these opportunities into sales. The experience begins right now, the minute that the lead comes in, the minute that the opportunity is there. So the first thing you're going to do is read the quote unquote lead, right? And I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a minute. The second thing is a phone call. So good for every one of you who are doing that first because robbing Peter to pay Paul and stopping the clock so that it feels good doesn't do anything, right? It's not going to convert into a sale. Then an email with a video. And I'll tell you, if you're not ready for a video yet, that's okay. One of the things that I teach every day is care plans. Think about it like you're going to the dentist, right? And it should sound painful. You go to the dentist, they don't do four cavity fills in one day. They schedule those for when you're supposed to do them for a reason, and they do that because they're building a foundation. They started that because of defectors that were coming in. So if you're not ready for video yet, and you need to start with email, start there. And know that three months from now, your care plan should be to have a video plan in process to then start making them. And then another three months later, whatever it is internally in your store, start implementing it. You're always going to start with a phone call because how do you know what to send? You don't. The next thing I want to address with that is texting. So I'm going to spit this out to you real quick, but if you're not familiar with the texting law, you should be. The change in the texting law that happened a year and a half ago was that actually two years ago now was one word. And that one word meant that when you text somebody, you are breaking the law the minute that you do it because you, that is now considered an advertisement that you're sending. Now, I'm going to 100% agree with you. I, I love to be texted. If you want to call me, actually, you should just send me a text. I don't even listen to voicemail. But I also know that you're putting your store in jeopardy because every single text that goes through with any type of lawsuit that's filed comes back on the store, and it's a significant amount of money between $1,500 and $10,000, depending on how the conversation goes, all because there wasn't a double opt-in. So you have to have a double opt-in. That means that when you walk into a restaurant or you go into a Charlotte Roof or a Macy's, you see these signs that say, hey, would you like to get a coupon and text uh, this to this five-digit code? That's to get the customer to first uh, have a conversation with the place, and then they come back and say, oh, just so you know, there could be charges for this that apply. You need to opt in. The customer comes back with a yes, and then boom, you're free to communicate. That's a double opt-in. Most CRMs have it. Do not get tricked by third-party lead providers that tell you that they have this in their text. It doesn't transfer to another person. So if you have a billboard-style product that says that they can accept uh, text messages and that it's allowed and it's right in their agreement, it's allowed for them, not for you. You can reach out to me for ideas on that if you need them. There's some great products, and there's also some great free ways to handle that. But if you have the ability, text should happen immediately. Let's talk a little bit about uh, reading the lead, as we were talking about. So I have Miss Jennifer Briggs as my example today. I want to show you a couple key things here. And while you're thinking some of this stuff might be very simple, are you actually implementing it in the store? Meaning, is the first thing that you're doing checking the name to make sure that it's in the proper format? Because if it's not and a template goes out or somebody else sends something out, the customer knows that you didn't write that for them and they don't feel special anymore. Whether they're spending five grand or $40,000, it does not matter. They have to feel special. We're wiping people up here. This is not a one night stand. All right, look at these, uh, these leads right here, these opportunities. Read the lead means look at the last one that came in, the last one you have, because hopefully you use the PhD philosophy for notes in your dealership, which is personal information, historical information, and deal information. Everything you know about somebody in a conversation should be logged in the notes. Because then when the next opportunity comes in, you're going to know why you lost it. You're going to know that before you talk to the consumer. 
vehicle information. Now I'm using a VIN screen, depending on what CRM you're with, the vehicle information would show here. Don't get stuck on that. People change cars all the time. They go from things like a Chevette to a diesel, and it happens every day. Don't get stuck on what they're looking at. Instead of saying things when you call them like, hi, my name is Bobby. Thank you for calling Johnson Motors. Uh, I know that you were calling in on the 2016 Dodge Charger, or that I'm trying to contact you, or you inquired online about this Dodge Charger. Instead, what if you said, hi, my name is Bobby, and I'm giving you a call from Johnson Motors. I'm calling because you inquired about a vehicle online. Pause. Anybody who knows anything about sales is we stop talking because the person that starts talking first loses control. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but that's what this is about. The other thing it does is it gives the customer an opportunity to tell me what car they're looking at, and now I know what I'm competing with. They might say something like, well, I looked at a Ford and a Chevy. Oh, good, great, now I know what I'm working with. Also, if I didn't call them back quick enough and somebody else got them on the phone, then I now have an opportunity to talk to them and have a genuine conversation about something they might have already ruled out. Maybe another dealer called them and the customer said to them, hey, I saw a 199 lease special online. And that person said, yeah, you got to have a red hat and amputation and you got to lease two vehicles that are conquest. Remember what we said about phone calls? They're bad, right? And the customer goes, well, now I don't need to talk to this guy or this girl when she calls me. I'm not going to give you an opportunity to do that. I'm going to ask an open-ended question that you're, and then I'm going to pause, that you're going to then have to talk to me about. Simple, small things. Trade-in info, you see that on the bottom of the screen here. Trade-ins are the easiest customers to get in. And if you challenge me on that, I'll do 500 fake phone calls with you because it is the easiest way to get a customer in for an appointment. I believe in being transparent, answering their questions, asking them for the appointment, and inviting them in. But I also know that the other dealerships are going to give them bad information. And I can say things like that. You know, that's a shame that that other dealership down the road gave you that information when you've clearly done so much research to do this right. Let me give you an idea of what it would be worth, but I truly need you to come in for a mechanical inspection as well. I'm going to answer your questions first before I go on to asking my own. Okay? All right, sweat the details. This is what I mean by sweat the details. Look at Jennifer's name here because I didn't change it. That's a detail that she will know, right? Keep that in mind as you're going. Mirror, mirror on the wall. I should have done a poll question to ask you guys. How many of you have mirrors at your sales desk? Because when you smile while you're talking, your tone changes. So it sounds a little something like this. I could say to Eliana, Eliana, are you yes, there? I'm here. Eliana. So I'm going to give you two different tones of voice. And the only change I'm going to make is that I'm smiling even though you can't see me. So I'm going to say, Eliana, you're such a jerk. That sounded mean, didn't it? But what if I said, Eliana, you're such a jerk. That was the same thing, people. It just sounded a little different. So we forget that. So put a mirror on the wall and remind yourself, you're going to look ridiculous for a couple days, but the good news is your whole team will look ridiculous together. And it does, in fact, work, and they're at the dollar store. All right, what kind of buyer is this? Are you sending the right message? Sourcing is so important. You see these sources here? They're different. So if I have a customer who comes in off of my website on an actual vehicle and they pick the specific unit, does that conversation look the same? is somebody who comes in on a trade and value page. It does not. Because you know right now what type of buyer that you have. If you sell cars on the lot, you know that when people walk on the lot, we try to identify what kind of buyer you are. Now, I don't care if you've been taught the ABC, D way, the payment trade, whatever it is, there's five basic principles that work with it. But I'm going to focus on what you're focusing on. Because if I know right now that you're a trade buyer, I don't need to worry about the car in particular right this second, the pricing, any of that stuff, unless you specifically ask me. What I'm focused on is getting you answers to your questions and getting you in using that. Those word tracks are super easy. And I don't believe in scripts and templates. So I'm not going to tell you that I'd write you one. Instead, what I would tell you is that you're going to have a genuine conversation based on knowing that they're a trade-in buyer and being able to say things like, what type of vehicle are you trading? Why are you trading it in? What did you love about that car? What didn't you? What have you been thinking about replacing it with? All right? While we talk about sourcing, let's talk about the difference in how they come in. So an OEM. If you get an OEM opportunity in, typically that customer is researching models in comparison. Third party, and when I say third party, I mean anybody that you're advertising to online that isn't on your website that you're buying either billboard space from, autotradercars.com, admins, or that you're buying an actual lead from and saying auto buy tell, Felix, things like that, right? Those are research and pricing customers. Dealer website, these close at two times the rate, and they're typically an actual vehicle. So if you know this about that customer, this is why I don't believe in templates. They're not all the same. I got asked a lot this week about hand raisers. Hand raisers are things that people hate, right? They always say, 
ah, I found these hand raisers coming in. If you don't know what a hand raiser is, because it's called different things by different OEMs, it's the person that goes to an event and looks at a car and enters to win something. It's the person that does something like that, and they're not typically a buyer right now. Here's what I would challenge you with. There are very few people that actually take the time to work a hand raiser lead because they have been labeled as quote unquote bad leads. What you really have in front of you is a customer who said, ooh, that's a cool car, I like it. That's the same customer that saw their neighbor pull into a driveway with that ooh, I like it car and started a car buying cycle. Put them in your Ferris wheel. Make them feel special. Nobody else is. And if you can make somebody feel special before they decide to talk to anybody else, then nobody else can capture their attention while that's happening. Right? Have a real conversation. Don't call them and say something like, uh, you inquired online. You know who these people are. Call them and say, look, I don't know, uh, I don't know about you, but I want to win that car at that contest too. Well, what did you think about it? Did you like the color? Have a conversation. All you're doing is pulling down walls. All right. I hear this a lot in dealerships. What shall I say? Say whatever you want. No, don't say whatever you want. <laughs> Have a conversation. You're no, dating. You're that's wiping wrong. them up. Wipe them up. Right. Don't say whatever you want. Okay. But mirror them. Go old school. Go old school in the way that we used to close things. If somebody, I hear people say all the time, like I can't believe they used a smiley face in an email. If the customer used a smiley face with you, this isn't going to be a popular response. If they did it, you can too. The reason that you can do that is you're mirroring their behavior. You're making them comfortable. You're pulling down the wall. Okay? Manners matter. All right, Eliana, I got a question for you. I'm ready. Do you like the color red? That's my favorite color. I love it, too. Do you like the color blue? It's all right. Yeah, sure. Why not? Do you, do you think the sky is pretty? Yes. Would you eat a dead squirrel off the middle of the road? No. <laughs> Oh my God, that'd be so gross, right? But do you know why you answered that question? <laughs> why? Because society told you your whole life it's polite to answer a question when somebody asks it, no matter how ridiculous it is. So a simple little trick, end everything that you send with a question. It will increase the engagement that you have. It doesn't matter what the question is. Mama says, be nice and answer questions people ask you. All right, <laughs> a couple quick answers. And I know I'm flying through this, so I'm doing that so we don't miss anything. But Stop saying to people, please stop saying to people, um, I'm here until 2. When can you come in? Um, I don't know if you know this, but Jamie, that sent in that opportunity, does not care if you're there until 2. That's why she's online sending it in as an email instead of calling in, because she doesn't want you to sell her anything. you got to turn it into a sale. So before you can say something like that, you need to give Jamie a reason to want to marry you. End it with a question. Include the why by and tell them why you're different. Set yourself apart. Whatever profile it is you've got going online, however long you've been married, I guarantee that if you aren't saying these words, wow, you look beautiful. I'm glad you took the time to get dressed so that we could go out to dinner. Or if you're a woman in the same situation, I guarantee you're saying, man, I wish you would say that. This is the same thing with your customers. 80% of the buying decisions are made by women, and we like to feel good. People remember the last way you made them feel in the most important emotional moment that you had with them. That's why when you hear a song that's sad, you think, oh, I'm so sad all of a sudden, and then you get it together. Uh, I have this great life coach, Renee Stewart, and I love her. She changed my life. But she told me one time, your brain doesn't know time when it comes to memories. And so for a couple seconds, you will feel however you felt in that moment before you can control it. And she is absolutely right. So make people feel special. The last thing that they feel is what they'll remember. And I'll guarantee you other people are not doing that for them. Templates, I reject them. I get it. Big companies come in to train you, and, and they have to give you templates because they can't come back every week. You don't want to pay for it. It doesn't happen, right? How about instead we just start at the top teaching people how to have a conversation with people? You were hired in your position because you're charming. That's what we are as salespeople. We're sweet. We're charming. We're PR people. Use that in your conversation and be genuine in it and talk to them the same way you would your mother or your friend or somebody that you're negotiating with that you care for. Have that conversation and it changes it. If you absolutely have to use templates, please don't use them in the beginning. Use them in the long-term process and go from there, but use them significantly with calls to action and why buy. Email best practices. All right, is the subject line and content actionable? Avoid all caps, spam, trigger words, and exclamation points. If you work in a state that has art van, you know that they're always having a sale. Or if you work in any dealership that's domestic and sells trucks, it's always truck month, right? Stop sending stuff that says, like, 2016, Grand Cherokee Laredo, we have a great deal for you. And for the love of God, stop saying great news. Everybody knows it's not great news. 
just have a conversation and <laughs> try it out loud. Stop putting videos and emails and link them because if I'm in Macy's and I open your email and it takes 30 seconds for it to load, I'm piecing out. I'm not reading it. Lastly, spam checkers are your friend. There is a site, isnotspam.com. There's 30 different sites that they have out there that are available. This is just one that I use regularly. If I'm going to send something to a high amount of people, I'll run the email through here first just to make sure that it's not going to be undeliverable. Take a look at your screen right now. This is what it looks like when people check their email now. Think about the last time you checked your email, probably even your work one. Uh, and this is just a copy of my own email coming through. I am no longer making a decision on if I will open your email based on the subject line. I am deciding on these first two lines. Boom, deleted. Put a strong call to action. Stop putting pictures in the top where it says things like 2.6 liter VW engine. I am not going to open it if it says that. It's not going to happen. So look at your screen right now, and I want you to really start thinking what do those first two lines look like when you're sending something out to someone. Okay. Everybody's asked me for an example of a first response. Look, I'm not perfect, and neither are you. These are the kind of responses I use. These are the kinds that I train on, and they have worked for me. It doesn't mean it's the only way or the best way, but it's me having a conversation with you. So let me just run you through this real quick and why. Bobby, first of all, great choice. It's obvious you've done your research. That's glamoring. Right? Good job. Congratulations. The 2013 Laredo has been an extremely popular vehicle, which is why I want to go on to the lot and actually put my hands on it. Eliana, have you ever got a letter from St. Jude with a dollar in it? Yes, I have. Yeah. They sent that out to 50,000 people while they were asking for money. That's kind of crazy, right? They do that for the obligation. I am willing to walk out onto the lot for you, make sure it's here. What else am I doing here, people? I'm making sure that after I tell you it's available, you don't just drive in and talk to somebody else. The internet people on this phone call will understand that. I am giving you a reason to need to talk to me without some shenanigans about how I have great news for you or there's a huge discount on this. I am not addressing anything that can cause an objection unless you ask me the question. I'm going to put the car in here and I'm going to do that on this one because you probably sent in 20 to different places and I want you to remember who I am. I want you to remember what I'm associated with in this situation. Remember, this isn't going out unless I didn't get a hold of you on the phone because that's the first thing that I did. Right? The pricing right here, don't let, that, don't let that make you crazy. Some people will say, I can't put pricing in an email, really. They were just on your website. They saw the price there. It's not a secret. Right? <laughs> Everybody knows. Holly Madison went live. There's nothing worse than finding a great deal on the exact vehicle you want and then finding out it isn't available. I'm telling you that you found a great deal. Good job. Go you. You're special. You did it. But I don't want it to be unavailable. Unfortunately, when you sent it in, it didn't come through with any particular questions because most of them don't because they don't ask questions. Because the real question is, is it available and can I trust you? That's what they're asking you when you don't get a question. But if you just respond and say, great news, the vehicle is available. Why do I need to talk to you now? I'm just going to drive through on a Sunday when you're not there. Or later on tonight, while well, I'll talk to somebody else. While I am out there, do you have any other questions about options that I can check on for you? Ending with a question. All right. Next up, and I'm going through these kind of quick because I know that we're running to the end of our time and there's some things that I don't want you guys to miss as we go through this. Let me move this toolbar. All right, getting better at that. All right, so these are some of the things I heard. Wait, I have a question. This is a question that comes in. I'm interested in this vehicle. The listed price is 3000 more than what I am willing to pay. Are you able to meet my price point? How many of you in your head right now thought, yeah, we don't mark cars up in thousands. We mark them up in hundreds. Oh, I'm not taking that to my manager. He's not going to give me three grand off. I'm just not going to do it. Boom, cherry picks, moved on to the next one. Or you're the person who fights for it. But here's the thing, whether you're that person or not, you tell yourself a story in your head of what you believe this means. Oh, they want three grand off of that particular car. Maybe not. Maybe they went to a dealership two weeks ago when they were in their first hot cycle, and they said, I want a $300 payment, and that dealership said, you need to be at 15 grand, and your car is 18. Not about the price, people, about what that other dealership told them. Or what if they're paying cash and they need three grand more? Don't make decisions for customers. Ask them what they're looking to do investigate, have a conversation, be a salesperson, not an order taker, and do not assume that you know what this question means, because you don't, and neither do I, until I have a conversation with that person. What's the price of the vehicle? Uh, it's listed online, right? It's there. Just be honest about it. If you work for a store that doesn't allow you to talk about pricing, and believe me, I understand how often it happens, go to the OEM website right now and find out what the starting and the ending price is on that car. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, it starts at 15371 and goes up to 22386 Did you know what trim level you were looking at? Boom, I answered your question. Now, if a customer continues to pry, of course I'm going to give them the information because I'm transparent and I believe in experience. 
But I'm also not afraid to start there. I'm also not afraid to say the payment's going to run between $2.99 and $5.99, depending on the trim level that you choose. And most people don't know what trim level they want. They'll say, I want an LS. Great. What do you want inside of that package? Oh, I don't know. I like the navigation. All right, perfect. The example you see on your screen right now, I won't run through this whole thing, but you will get it in your copy. This is for a customer who specifically asks on a particular unit what exactly the price is with the rebates and information, and this happens all the time. So the beginning looks the same. The second part is designed to get the customer to get on the phone. We don't sell cards through email. We get people on the phone by using email if that's their preferred method, and when we get them on the phone, we are transparent, great experience, and a conversation, and then we invite them in. And I'm not saying you can't give out payments, and I'm not saying don't give out trade-in values. What I'm saying to you is take control of the conversation, give them what they need, and then ask them for what you want. Next up, that was easy, but what about this one? Uh, this one makes me serious. This is an actual question from a forum, and I've talked about this a lot this year because it makes me serious. This customer says, I have test driven the vehicle already, so I do not need to come in, and I'm looking to buy in the next two weeks. I'm researching all dealerships in the state, and I will work with the dealership who gives me the best offer out the door. I'd like an out-the-door price on this model, availability on your lot, waiting time if you don't have it, and I also want to know how far over or under or invoice you're quoting me. That way I can compare offers accurately. Please list any dealer fees out for me. Over 81 people wrote on this forum on this exact question that somebody asked, uh, yeah, I'm out. Some version of I'm not willing to put the work in. Well, if you're not willing to put the work in, get off the team. Because this customer said to you, I am already so far down the funnel that I have test driven a vehicle. I am telling you exactly how long I want to buy, and I'm telling you that what most dealerships say, which is, well, that's not apples to apples. I'm giving you a chance to do it by saying give me over and under invoice. I'm also saying that I know my car is a niche car, waiting time if you don't have it. What I'm really saying to you is I don't trust anyone. So I need you to make it where I can trust you. Answer the question. They already know the answers. Here's the thing, I tell my kids all the time, and I tell my friends all the time, right now, the answer is no. They're not going to buy it from you. They're not going to do this. What's the worst thing that happens if you put the work in? The answer is still no. The customer gave you everything you need. You know what they didn't do? They didn't walk on your lot, waste four hours of your time, run you through the ringer, make you go through numbers, make you run back and forth to the desk so that your mindset was jacked, and give you all this crap for you to find out seven hours later that they weren't coming back on the VBAC bus put the 30 minutes of work into something like this and look at this as an opportunity. All right, there is no information. What do I do with that? That's when you get the information in and there's not a question. And we talked about that. Number one call that comes into a dealership, is the car available? That's what this customer is asking you. They're saying, please let me trust you. For 20 years we have lied. We have said that payments uh, are 199 and then when the customer comes in we say, you have to own three houses in Switzerland to qualify for that. You know we say that stuff all the time. And it has happened, and we have trained people to not trust us. Did you know that Harvard released a study that said that when somebody goes into an emergency room and has to have triple bypass surgery, and it is going to be an emergency in three days, they are going to take their heart out of their body. They're going to cut them open, and they're going to give them a 12% chance of survival. Do you know that that person, on average, researches that doctor for three hours? Three hours, life in your hands. Do you know to buy a car they research for 18 to 19 hours? Wow. That speaks volumes, volumes for what we're doing. So people just want to know that they can trust you, and it starts in the beginning. Inspect what you expect. If you're on this call saying, we do that, we do that, we do that, I challenge you to go back 30 days and see if you really do. Not because I don't believe you, but because remember what I said. Accountability and implementation. People process accountability. That's why we fail. All right, $10 takeaways. People always say to me, Bobby, how do I get people to do it, though? How do I get them to do it? What I want you to do is I want you to talk to a manager, talk to yourself, whatever you want to do, get two or $300 in $10 bills, cash this in $10 bills. Pick the one thing, the one behavior that you want to change this month. Is it response time? Is it uh, quality of response? Is it engagement? Is it closing? I don't care what it is. Pick one thing. And every time you see somebody do it, use positive reinforcement, flip them 10 bucks. It's a drink. It's that wild money that nobody knows about. It's stopping to get lunch without having to tell your significant other that you use the debit card. It happens all the time, but it's positive reinforcement. It's why when we potty train children, we do things like give them Cheerios and clap for them. Positive reinforcement. It's always better than constructive criticism. All right, humanize yourself. This is where we talk about video. Video is huge. You want to go, you, 
you want to set yourself apart from everybody else, something as simple as a video, and look, I get it, it's not comfortable. We have spent years teaching people how to accept contact, how to wait on the lot, how to have an internet opportunity come in to talk to, how to have somebody come into the showroom. But we have not done our due diligence to teach people how to actually initiate contact, which is uncomfortable. And in video, that's hard. So not everybody on your team is suited for it. But Elise Kephart, who is a very good friend of mine and is one of the best I have ever seen when it comes to not only coming up with a program but implementing it, has shared some videos with me that I really enjoy and that I use with my clients. So I'm going to show you a couple of those right now. All right, here we go. And you can hear this. So once this loads, and this is what it would look like on mobile. Once it gets to the next part, we should be able to hear it just fine. Hey there, John. My name is Elise. I'm an assistant here to Stephen over at Rarities of Kirkland. Hey, hope you're having a fantastic morning. Just left you a voicemail. I got your online request. So thank you so much for that in regards to the Dodge Dart. And did have a couple questions in regards to your 2014 model. You had mentioned about 16, 8,000 miles. I want to make sure it's a rider. We want to make sure it's a accurate information. Do me a favor, ring me back today when you have a quick moment. Uh, the number here, again, it is listed below. Uh, this video is going to be 425-821-1777. It is uh, right about 11 o'clock here Wednesday. We'll be here uh, until about 9, or 9 o'clock or so tonight. And uh, I'll try you back here in just a little bit as well to make sure it's speak soon. Thanks so much again, and uh, hope you're having a great day. Bye. Okay, now that's a personalized video response to a potential buyer. It takes 60 seconds to make it. It's personalized to that person, but here's what's really important. If somebody is online submitting an inquiry to 10 different places or the average third party resells it five times, including your OEM, how do you, as that charming person that was hired because you're good with people, how do you convey who you are through a series of letters strung together on a piece of paper, on an email? You don't. If you really want to stand out and you want somebody to convert and you want them to have a conversation, make a video and turn yourself into a person because then you're not that scary person anymore. Now you're more like the heart surgeon, right? Now you can actually have a conversation with them. It's not hard. It takes seconds. Use it as a link. If you don't have a product, they're out there, but you don't have to have one either, okay? Some people might say, I don't have time for that. So what about a static response? What about something that you make one time? and you use over and over and over again. And remember, you're linking these in your email. I suggest using YouTube and then linking it over for relevancy, but maybe you've got a better idea on how you like to use it. This is an example of something that can be sent out over and over and over again. Again, this is something Elise and I made when uh, Elise was working with me for Garber as a consultant, and she came in and did all these things. These worked really well. Oh, let me, my mouse has disappeared. So let me go back to that. <laughs> no worries. We did have a comment. This is James over at Garber here at GMC. I wanted to take a quick moment to make you this personalized video email. I'm going to be the one helping you with your online. See how he's being humanized? He's smiling. He's giving the number. He's setting an expectation that he's going to call back later if he doesn't get to take a call now. I'll be sure. And then watch him turn into a human right now. It's going to be amazing because it's going to be about what other people are saying about him. Thanks, Kyle. I have sent a few of my clients to numbers, and they've been having the exact same experience I have. Just for a So that gives you an idea of how that works, and, and these links will be in my presentation. Eliana, what's the comment? Well, Chris wrote in, Elise knows video email better than anyone. I wholeheartedly agree Agreed. with that. And then AJ Maida wrote in, well, what if you're scary looking like me? <laughs> <laughs> And you say, I love you, and you're not I scary looking you at all. But if so, pull the prettiest person in the store over and do a voiceover. You can use your voice, and then you can use them, too. <laughs> People just want to know that you're real. That's all they're trying to do. So no appointment, no problem follow-up plans that increase appointment ratios. Let's talk a little bit about lead follow-up. Um, so, okay, manufacturers are telling you that 14 days is the hot time, right? You need to be hot, hot, hot for 14 days engaging the buyer. But what if I send you in an opportunity today and you're hot, 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 and I go out of town because I travel a lot, and then next month I send in another one to a different dealer? Aren't I still in the 14-day hot cycle, just you don't know? Make sure you put hot spots of engagement throughout your process, which, by the way, should last about 180 days. 
every couple weeks or so, go ahead and hit that hard for a couple of days, but definitely hit it hard for the first 14 so that you can do that. I call no less than three times in the first day. People say that's aggressive. People say don't do that. I text, I send a video email. You know what? I'm going to quote Danny Zando, who posted this in the, in the BDC Automotive Forum on Facebook and said, I would rather spiff a rep for being told to get lost than lose the selling opportunity due to a lack of connection. That's right. You go, girl. It's the exception that gets made. Don't not call them because you have to make them feel special, but everybody else is calling them too. Get them on the phone. Only 10% of salespeople follow up past the third contact. This comes from a, a sales forum, actually, that quoted a study, and I did a little bit of research to make sure, but it, in my own experience, it's the truth. If you really want to see how your stores are doing on opportunities, I challenge you to go back seven days. Go back seven days and see if anybody followed up past three or if the contact was there. It's not. And here's the thing. We live in a time of click and go convenience, which means that if somebody doesn't want to be available, they're not. And I don't have to answer the phone when, uh, when somebody calls me because I know you're going to call me back, right? So if I'm trying to buy something from you, you'll call me back when, when I want to answer. And if you don't, then whatever, I'll call you later. And that's kind of the mindset that gets used. Your days change in five minutes. You probably didn't know when you got on the webinar that I would still be talking seven minutes later, or maybe you did, past the time that we should be ending. But because you didn't know that, you could have had plans to do something right now, and yet we've only lost six people who are in attendance. So keep in mind that people's days change in a moment, and you need to have that contact all the time. I just didn't log it. Um, OK, sure you did. If it's not in the CRM, it doesn't count. Right? I am a, I'll go to somebody's desk and look to see if a call actually was made. Because again, if you don't want to do that, then you shouldn't be taking these opportunities. When should you contact them? Right now. Right now, the minute you did it. Reading the lead takes five seconds. And looking at their Facebook or any type of social media, which is another thing I really recommend for building rapport, takes only minutes of your time. That's it. I need to know less about the car and more about you to build rapport. I don't care about the trim level. At this point, I don't even care if the car's here. I'm just trying to get you on the phone so that you'll want to talk to me. I probably have it forwarded to my cell phone so I can walk outstairs and outside and make you a video right then. You get a lead in or an opportunity in on a Sunday and you're out with your kids, I get it. Answer it. Call them back and say this. Hi, this is Bobby. I'm calling from Johnson Motors. I just wanted to let you know that my son's baseball game right now, but your business is important to me. What questions do you have? If I can answer them right now, I will. And if not, I'll give you a call back in the morning when I get to the office. What time's good for you? People want to feel special, and they do, and that took two minutes. And if you're not willing to do that when you're not there, then you're not willing to be in the top 1%. How would you handle it on the floor? That's what I want you to think about with processes. It doesn't matter if I spit you out the best best practice you've ever seen with 75 forms, templates, and processes. I can put all that stuff in your CRM right now, but guess who's not going to use it if you're not bought in? Anybody in the store. The managers have to be bought in. The salespeople have to be bought in. It doesn't matter how it looks when it's shiny. If you don't feel like it's your idea, you don't want to do it. You want to get people around you to do things that they don't want to do? Make them feel like it's their idea and then praise them for it. Be genuine in that compliment and they will do it. But it has to match what you want on the floor. And so remember, we talked about a care plan. We start little, and then we go big. All right, you got the appointment set? This is a really good example of a video to send to a customer. Again, Elise made this for the Garber stores that sets up a TO and confirms an appointment. While you've done this, this is designed for you to be able to send out to, to the customer, also making a confirmation call. When you're making the confirmation call, you're asking the customer who they're bringing with them. Take a specialty drink order. This is something that we do at ZMEP that's huge. You got a Starbucks next door. You got a Jamba Juice next door. Ask the customer on the phone when you call and do the confirmation, what would they like to drink because you're going to get a custom drink order. Two things will happen. They'll either say, oh, I would love that, and then they'll tell you, again, St. Jude's obligation, or they'll say, no, thank you. I, I don't want to make you do that. And you can say, well, look, I get to expense it if I get one too, so please help a girl out. You know, like, let, let's get a coffee together. What I'm doing is creating a wow experience. I'm also going to tell you that when you pull in, you should pull to the left, park up front where the reserve sign is at. And you can use a reserve sign that has a whiteboard on the front of it that's an actual pole. Or you can put the reserve sign inside of the car that they're coming to look at. But this is old school psychology. We used to isolate the car on the lot so the person didn't go to the most expensive car for the least expensive price. And we would say, pull here. NADA says that the most confusing thing and frustrating thing for a customer coming into a dealership is not knowing where to go. So I'm going to say to you, Eliana, Eliana, I've just taken your drink order. When you pull in, I want you to pull right over to the right. You're going to see a reserve sign with the car that you're looking at parked right there. 
go ahead and pull right up next to it. I'm not going to tell you that because I want you to remember that you hate that car that you're driving and really want this new one, but that's the psychology of it. And then I'm going to say to you, Eliana, after you do that, come right in the front, move right to the left, the receptionist. She's going to pay me, and I'm going to bring you your coffee. Are you going to waste 30 or $40 a month on people who don't show? Sure you are, but you'll get an extra coffee, so try to talk to them into things you like. Most of the time, though, you're going to convert higher. Follow it up with an appointment confirmation like this one that I'm going to play for you real quick. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but you can Google it or YouTube it. Uh, and it is under Del Rey Buick GMC. And this is, again, a video that Elise made for us while we were at Garber that we used very successfully and set up POs with. So here we go. Hi, my name is JC Kent. I'm the general sales manager here at Del Rey Buick GMC. I was reviewing our appointment, and I saw that you were scheduled to visit with us. First off, thank you for the opportunity to start your business. Also, when you meet with your product... Look at all those smiling faces. <laughs> that doesn't feel scary. Thank you once again, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Boom, look at that. He's not scary at all. And, and he's got he the said, dimples. When you what? Come in, he's not scary at all, yes. Yeah, what he said was, when you come in, I like to meet all my customers. Please make sure I get a chance to say hello. Now, when the person goes to get the manager, it's not like, oh, here comes the closer. It's, oh, that's that guy with the green smile that wanted to say hi. All right, we're almost done here, so you win, you lose. That is a mindset thing. When you get off this call, anything that you've taken from it, you're going to take to somebody and you're going to talk about and somebody's going to shoot you down because they didn't get on the call or they didn't have the conversation. And I want you to remember that only one person wins in a battle and one person becomes complacent. So never stop going to the desk and demanding perfection. Never stop going to your manager and saying, we will give a trade in value. Never stop doing that because the minute that you do, you have accepted defeat and you didn't make a change. You are responsible for making a culture change that changes things within your store. All right, remember these numbers? These were the ones that I wanted you to get to. I've included some uh, worksheets in here for you guys to get you there to talk about it. You're welcome to reach out to me as well. You can partner with me at any time as a conversation. I told you when I sent the top out that this isn't a sales pitch, and it's not, but I am a dealer-to-dealer -dealer person, and I am willing to help you. So if you really want to get down to the granular, an hour, hour and a half, which is what we've spent, is not enough time to kind of go through everything, but I'm happy to help you in any way, and you have my information. And I will leave you with this. Knowing versus doing. Not doing something is either a knowing problem or a doing problem, right? But there is little difference between those who cannot read and those who will not read. The result of both is ignorance. The outcome is still the same. So whether you know it's a problem and you don't do it or you're just not opting to handle it is up to you. I've got some suggested resources for you. The Automotive BDC Internet Sales Group on Facebook is a great resource. There are some brilliant minds in there. Jared McCreevy, Seth Dustin. They're in there giving information and they're in there helping each other out and they're in the grind with you every day. The exclusive tribe, which we are not allowed to talk about, uh, is an exclusive invite only Facebook forum that you can join, contact me for information. If you're qualified, I'll nominate you. But I suggest that you get on these forums, get on these blogs and with these webinars and with these networking events and utilize everything you have because there is not any dealership that I know of, even the ones that are trying the very best they can, that are able to give their people all of the constant coaching that they need. So homework for you, and then we're all set. Start at Start Baseline. Where are you now? Review your internet process and your CRM. Is everyone on the same page and does it match expectations? Are you fighting each other? What is your why by at least five reasons while you're different from the person that's next to you? Identify your first $10 takeaway and then call me if I can help you. All right, Eliana. <laughs> wow. Oh, God, I am so bad. Can I just tell you, I am like sweating from all the information you just put out there. Holy moly, that was a quick audience. I know you loved everything you heard. Guess what? We still got some more to go through. We got some phenomenal questions. If you haven't gotten in your question yet for the great Bobby Heron, now is a great time to get those questions in. We're going to get to the Q&A session in just a moment. First, I'd like to direct your attention over to the handouts section of the GoToWebinar interface. We don't have just one. We don't have two. No, we have five handouts for you today. That is correct. So if you want to go over there, they're going to be available for you to download until the very end of this broadcast. What you'll find in there is a copy of Bobby's slide deck. There is also, and Bobby, if you want to say anything about these handouts, please do so. Yeah. Um, there's training mystery shops. There's mystery shops. Uh, there's a, a sheet on there on how to mystery shop the competition. And another one on how to mystery shop your own store. And then there's a, a final 
uh, handout called Start at Start. So if you haven't download those, yes. downloaded those yet, do so now. Bobby, did you have any um, points or anything that you yeah, wanted to talk actually. about? Yeah, actually. Yeah, so when you look at these uh, Mystery Shop for the competition, that's for people in your store to do. When you look at the Mystery Shop, your own store, what I want you to do is I want you to print 50 of those. And then I want you to give them to your friends, your wife, your husband, your kids, all of them. And I want you to ask them each to do one mystery shop. These aren't designed like a one, two, three, four, five. These are genuine conversations that you need to be having. And the people that are around you that you love are not in automotive and they'll give you real answers. So use that. The training mystery shop is, it's just when I always have hired somebody uh, for internet or in sales, either way, and when I coach or consult for stores, this is the schedule that I start them on because the very first thing I want a green pea or somebody who's not in our business to learn is what to do and what not to do. So there's just a breakout in there of you for it in there. And I did not include any logos on any of these papers, and I did that for a reason because I want you to feel free to add yours, and I want you to use it in your stores, and I don't want you to feel like it was an advertisement from somebody else. I want you to know that our conversation is genuine. I do think you're special, and this is how I partner with you. All right. Uh, boy, everyone's writing in great info. Thank you so much. Bobby, you're a rock star. I mean, all kinds of wonderful things. Thank you so much. And if you have questions, let's get to those in just a moment. Before we do that, oh, I'm so excited about this. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, well, I announced that our good friends over at ZMOT, they're giving away an amazing prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win an iPhone 7. Oh, I know. It's killing me that I can't win this, but you know what? One of you can. So get to your keyboards, get ready. What an awesome, awesome prize, especially with the holidays right around the corner. So uh, get your keyboards, get ready. First person to write in the correct response to our giveaway question will be winning this awesome prize today. Um, we are going to ask that if you are a vendor, you know, I love you vendors, I'm a vendor. If you're a vendor, we're going to ask you to please sit this out. This prize is intended only for dealership personnel, but Feel free to come by and enjoy all of our webinar awesomeness every week. All right, everyone, here we go. Good luck. By the way, when you win, I know you're going to be like high-fiving people and everything. Please make sure you take a quick moment to write in and let me know the dealership you're from and also send me a mailing address so our good friends over at ZMOT can get that prize out to you as quickly as possible. All right, here we go, everyone. Good luck. Earlier in the presentation, Bobby talked about the top three foundational reasons why we fail. Name all three. Oh my God, so many people are writing in. All right, let's see. I am so excited to see who wins this. <laughs> so excited. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to give it to, oh my gosh, I can't, the, the, the screen won't stop moving. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Um, okay, I know more than one person got this correct, so I'm just going to tell you, yes, the, pro the correct answer was people, process, and accountability. The first person to write in the correct response is Linda Harner. Linda Harner, you are today's winner. Good job. Congratulations, Linda Harner. Okay, that's it. I put it in ink. Congratulations, Linda Harner. I wish I knew which dealership you were from. Let's see if she wrote in. She wrote in. Woo, woo. <laughs> she, she wrote in. She is from Extreme Motors. Linda, let me know your mailing address, what city and state you're from, all that happy goodness. Um, now, I know, we only had one great prize to give away today, but you know what? We give away cool prizes every week. So come on back to another Dealer On webinar, and who knows, that could be the day you win a very awesome prize on a Dealer On webinar. For right now, we're going to congratulate Linda Harner from Extreme Motors. I still don't know where she's from. <laughs> and, uh, Linda, Linda, also make sure that you share with us who the provider is for the cell phone company so that we make sure that we order the correct one for you. Ooh, Linda, it doesn't even matter what pr provider you want. She's going to order you the one that you want. That's right. Um, we got to uh, thank all of you for playing. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Linda Harner. And, of course, we got to thank our good friends over at ZMOT for their incredible generosity. Thank you so much. And come on back to another Dealer on Webinar for your chance to win a prize. All right, here we go. I am wearing my Bobby Heron lipstick. I even got Bobby Heron glasses on. <laughs> Bobby, where are you, my friend? 
I am about to share my webcam with you. Hey, cutie. What's up? Hi. Okay, we have, I, I can't even tell you, I, my screen is so full of comments and questions. I'm, I love that. I'm a little scared because we have so many people on. Now, I'm just going to let you know we are recording this for you. We do have your handouts for you, but we are recording this for you. So I'd love it if you asked a question to stick around until your question is asked. We're going to go in order that the questions were asked. And if you can't stick around, don't worry. I'm going to be sending you a link to the recording uh, as soon as it's available. So we're going to power through as many of these as we can. Let's see how many questions we can get through in... God, you went really over time, Bobby. I'm not messing around. World domination is not an easy thing, Eliana. <laughs> we can't cover that in an hour? Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, um, first question. Let's go up here. Okay, Danielle wanted to know, and she wasn't the only one. Actually, a lot of people asked this. When we asked our third poll question, a lot of people weren't really sure what is the bucket system. So really quickly, can you describe to them what the bucket yeah. system is? I can. So depending on your CRM, the bucket system is where you have all of your opportunities come into one spot, and then you assign certain people to it. So I would say there's five people in the store that can live inside of this bucket, but every opportunity drops into it, and whoever gets it first is who gets to work it. So if you have VIN solutions, it's called the bucket. EVs and dealer socket call it something different. I'm happy to help you work through it. But basically all you're saying is we're off the fair policy. This isn't about fairness. This is about results. All right. Thank you so much to all of you who wanted to know what the bucket system is. Now you know. You got a follow-up question? We're here for you. Okay, Linda. Oh, Linda, who is our winner today? She Hi, actually has, she has the second question. Um, she says, "How do you feel about IAs? Oops, AIs. Ha. Huh. Okay. So, how do you feel about AIs? <laughs> so, how do I feel about artificial intelligence? That's what she wrote. I, I just I'm read the questions her, here. It, Linda, are you asking about products like Conversica or Ava, as it's called? Is that what you mean by that? She said yes. Yeah, okay. So I think that when you have a broken process, you need somebody to help fill it with a solution. To give you a strong process in store, you don't always need that. But Conversica actually is a really good product if used right. If the store is trained on who the fake name is, if the receptionist knows that, if everybody knows it coming in, and you're using it during times that you're not there, times when you're closed, that's different. But I don't think that you need a long-term follow-up system that's worked by somebody other than you unless there's a problem or in that process or you don't have enough staffing, and that can be an issue too. Yeah. So I'm not against it by any means. I just think it only works in certain stores and only when necessary. Thank you very much, Linda. Always good to hear from you. Congratulations, girl. You're going to be getting your prize directly from our friends over at Zmot Auto. Okay, um, next question. Well, I want to say we had a lot, a lot of people who commented on, okay, so now the lead came in and it got handed to me. What was your, what's the first thing you do? You remember that poll question? So a lot of people yep. wrote in a lot, like maybe 30, 40. I don't know. It's too much for me to handle. Um, they all said, what their process was. So I was yeah. at one point contemplating reading all of those. I can't do it. There's too many. There's too many. So I'd love to see them. <laughs> I know, I know. But so what I am going to do is uh, let me read this question that that Georgian wrote in, and then if if you could just describe to everyone what the perfect yeah. process that you would recommend would be, I'd love that. But let me get to this question from Georgian. Yeah. She says. We've always handled the internet leads, phone ups. Now they're going to send all the internet leads and phone ups to the sales floor. We, the BDC, will not even get a chance to call the leads until four days later. Do you feel this is a good practice? So she's obviously, the leads now are going directly to the sales and they're getting a chance before it gets switched over to the BDC. I think that's kind of weird, right. but it's not my dealership. But you've been around dealerships for... Yeah, it for happens a lot. Yeah, it happens a lot. And so here's what I would tell you first. Don't trick yourself into thinking that um, it's going to change your opportunity. Okay, so a lot of times what will happen in a store, I'm plugging in as we're talking to my oh, laptop guy. I saw uh, A lot of times what will happen uh, when we're in a store is that uh, they'll take those opportunities away and give them the sales because they think they'll have a stronger result. And then they give you the past four-day follow-up so you can do the long term. Right? We know that the quicker you get to somebody, the more likely that they are to actually close on this opportunity. Right? So here's what I want you to think about. For the next three weeks, I want you to not look at the amount of times they don't call on time or that it doesn't happen. Instead, I want you to take that start at start worksheet and I want you to fill it out right now for where you're at now 
yeah. in three weeks from now, I want you to do the exact same thing because the only way you get it back is if you guys were doing a better job and the only way they know that outside of gut feeling or sales perception is if you record it. So put the numbers on paper. But in the meantime, while they're doing that, go back through your last six months of leads and work them hard. Fill the Ferris wheel. There are so many opportunities in there. Pull up the ones that have a trade-in VIN number and pull the car facts on them that's typically free through your store because you're paying for bulk. Get rid of the ones that show that they've been traded in and then bust it to get those people on the phone because you're going to have those opportunities there. I get it. It's not fair. I've been there and I, I completely understand what you're saying. Uh, but the only way you're getting them back is if you can prove it. So do the start at start worksheet. And here's the good thing. Don't go into it hoping that they fail. Because if they don't fail and they get that part better, then you can work alongside them as a hook and a close, as a partnership, and together you guys can sell more cars and make more money. So That sounds that's great. That. By the way, Georgianne did follow up with a comment. She did say, I'm the BDC director here, and I'm just trying to figure out the thinking yeah. of kicking everything to the sales floor. So Georgianne, I hope we helped you out. And if you have so, a Oh, go ahead. Georgianne, my number is showing right below here on the screen right now. No, uh, no obligation to do anything, but I'll have a personalized conversation with you about this because I've experienced it several times. I will help you. All you have to do is call me. Georgianne, I would totally take her up on that. All right. Um, thank you so much for the great question. Let's try and get through some more great questions. Uh, next one, okay. When we asked the poll question about how are the leads distributed, oh my God, we got so many comments, so many one. I mean, we had a lot of people on mm -hmm. today, right? We had so many wonderful comments. I wish I could get to them all. But it was funny because a lot of people were like, round robin is awesome. Round robin stinks. I hate round robin. I love round robin. I use round robin. I can't stand round robin. Oh, my gosh. So Strong opinions, right? So, I mean, uh, I, I, again, I wish I could read them all. We don't have time for that. Yeah. Now, when weighing round robin versus the bucket system, I know you said before, but tell me one more time. Tell everyone one more time. If yeah. you're doing round robin, what's the good parts about it? If you're doing the bucket system, what's the yeah. good parts about it? Which one would you prefer? If you, if you were a GM again, which one would you do? Yeah. Well, when I own my own store again, or 20 in the next <laughs> 10 years, uh, I will only use the bucket system. And that is because it is not okay to make a customer wait because John is with a customer right now, and it's his turn. It's not okay to say that Amy has Tuesday off and the lead comes in in her name because it's in a round robin and she still has it and she's not here to answer. And before you say, well, we schedule their days off, do you schedule a sick day? Unless you're logging into your CRM every day to say, oh, she's sick today, this is what's happening, which we're not most of the time. It's not about fairness. It's about customer quality and experience. And those who are qualified to work with customers non-verbally should have access to a bucket where everything funnels in. Think of it like a sand bucket at the beach where the rocks get caught in the first layer and then the sand and then the water and everything is calming. And it's beautiful when you're done. That's what we're doing. We're wiping people up. And that's not about fairness. So that's about competition. And it can be healthy, but it's required. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Great questions. Uh, great comments from the audience, by the way. I've never had such an active audience. Today was I love that. off the chain. Amazing. Okay. Um, Lydia. Oh, I can't wait to get to this question. She's going to ask your opinion on something that's happening at the dealership. She says, I'm arranging for our dealership to host a drive to donate fundraiser for the local animal shelter. I love that. For every yes. Yeah, it's cool. For every test drive, our dealership will donate $10 to the animal shelter. Here's the question. How do I convince my sales team that the increase in customers going on test drives will result in more sales? Even if it doesn't happen right away, we're still building that relationship for a future purchase. And by the way, I just want to, before Absolutely. Bobby answers, Lydia, I just want you to know, people who love animals, who love pets, who, like me, have actually rescued a pet from an animal shelter, they will remember that. Bobby, your answer? Yes. Well, first I'm going to give you two things that I'm going to give you the answer. One, Mary Lynch, if you were on this webinar, I would like you to reach out to Lydia. Mary is also a pet lover and has done this in a, several dealerships successfully, like a million times, and she works with me on my team. Uh, second of all, add to that, not just the test drive, but anybody who comes into service and lets you swap out their plate frame from your competitors to this one, 
do the $10 for them too. The third thing is identify who on the floor is going to be best suited to be able to handle this customer and not treat them like, oh, we're just going down this test drive because we have to. This is one of those things. Not everybody on your floor is going to be that person. Find the influencer. You have a positive and a negative influencer on every floor. The one that spreads cancer and talks crap every morning around the water cooler and the one who smiles all day and gets people to do things that they want. Those are your two people that you need on your side. Put them into a focus group. Have a conversation in a room. Throw the idea out at them and ask them what they think and what they would do and how would they handle it and how could they convert that customer into a true opportunity. Let them feel like it's their idea. And if you've already had a conversation with them, what I'm saying to you is do it in a private room. Go into the lunch room. Go to lunch. Do anything like that and just say, hey, you know, we have these people that are clearly interested in these vehicles. They could go to the animal shelter. They could go anywhere for this. This is a real opportunity. Are you a person who's willing to put them into your Ferris wheel? Because you have to create buy-in to get them to do it, and not everybody on the floor is going to be qualified to do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mary, Mary is on the call, and she says, where do I need to test drive? <laughs> That's right. Seriously, Lydia, get with Mary. We have done this a million times. I know I can't give you a 20-minute response, but we can help you do this. Dealer to dealer, no kind of charger obligation, just one good person to another. Reach out to me, please. Okay, thank you so much, Lydia. Good luck on that one. I hope you make a lot of money for that for that animal shelter. Okay. Next question comes in from David Sharp. Hey, Sharpie. He says, I was at a seminar put out by Ford last week, and one of the presenters said that they that there was only a very small percentage difference in selling a customer if you contact them within the first 15 minutes or within one hour. Sounds like BS to me. What are your thoughts, Bobby? It is. It is BS. What they're talking about is it's total BS. I don't know who it was, but I'm calling you out. The, uh, here's what it is. It's the engagement rate of contact. I'm not as available in an hour as I am in five minutes. Also, if you don't call me for an hour, your competitor could have got a hold of me and given me that information, and now I don't need to talk to you or I've eliminated it. And we know that that happens quick. It's five to seven minutes that it should be there. We live in an inconvenienced, click-and-go, high mentality of entitled just first world problem behavior, and people expect that we will be on that, does that mean that if you contact somebody an hour from now instead of five minutes that they're going to sell quicker? No, nope, but they're more likely to actually answer the phone and actually be available. So I'm not buying it. I don't know who said that, but I wish you'd message it to me so I could call them and have a conversation about it. <laughs> I hear you. All right, David, thank you so much for the great question. You always have great questions. All right, next question. <laughs> Not really a question, kind of. Uh, Danielle, she said, who the heck has time to take videos? <laughs> this is before you showed. I do them all the time. I know, I know. This is before you showed yeah. um, the uh, the video that you could just, you know, that you've made and you can send out yeah. to anyone and it's universal. But I will let you know, Danielle, um, one of the very first webinars I ever did with Elise Kephart was how to make a personal branding video within five minutes. So if you want, mm -hmm. Check, go to dealeron.com slash webinars yes. and in the search feature, try and, you know, uh, you know, search for Elise Kephart webinars. Yes. That one, I tell you, it will go down as a classic. It was amazing and she does it live yeah. during the broadcast. She does it live. It was pretty amazing and yes, it was done in less than five minutes and she made a mistake and it was still done in less than five minutes. So Danielle and everyone yes, else so out fast. there. By the way, Elise Kephart was one of the attendees today. She came to see what you were going to talk about. Hey. <laughs> she was tweeting out a storm. Um, I'm a huge fan. And oh. just so you know, when I she's been on my show like six Elise, times. Like, I love her. She's amazing. Yeah, Elise. Actually, I interviewed, and I am not an easy person to get to hire a company. But I spent six years at a dealership, a group with over 16 franchise stores and 32 non. And when I looked for the right consultant for our store to get video implemented, I put people through the ringer. And it was before Elise and I were friends, and she killed it. And she gave me the results I wanted, and it took five minutes. So believe that if you set up on your phone, iPhone is the easiest way to do it, right? Fun case. Uh, <laughs> you set it up on your phone to be one touch Wi-Fi to your store's YouTube account or your own branding account, whatever your store prefers. You're going to take the video. It's not supposed to be professional. It's supposed to be credible. I'm going to walk out on the lot and show you the exact car you want, make myself a human, smile like this so you want to talk to me, and then make you want to call me back. And then I'm going to hit one button to launch that thing, that sucker right over to YouTube. 
launch it live and share it as an unlisted video. And it took me four minutes. And if you don't have the time, because I get it, I do. You're probably making a million different calls. I know how it goes. Make some of the static ones. Reach out to myself or at least perhaps and we'll help you. And look on the Dealer on Webinar page because she did do a webinar and I gave all of the directions for free. So I love We're it. happy to help you. Okay, now, Bobby, this is the section of the <laughs> questions that came in where everyone was listing how, what their follow-up was like exactly right after they come, yeah. exactly after they get an opportunity in. Without, yeah. I'm not even going to read all of them because there's like, like I said, 30 or 40 of them. What is your perfect opportunity follow-up right after you get an opportunity in? Please tell the masses. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to keep in mind when I say this that you need to be compliant in your texting. So, in my opinion, it's a phone call immediately. I'm not a big fan of voicemails. I think the missed call is the new voicemail, but I still leave one anyways, letting them know who you are. Something really sweet and smiling while you talk. See how that happens? Uh, so, immediately, if you get a hold of them, obviously, that's the end of that part of the process. Now you're either going to confirm it, you're going to do whatever you need to do at that moment. But if you don't, then I want you to call them back two more times that day. I want you to also send two emails with a video saying, hey, I just called. I'm going to call you again at 5 o'clock and let them know you're going to be calling back again. Let them know you're going to be bothering them and say things like, I'm not trying to bother you. I just want to make sure you have the information you need. I call days 1 through 14 every day, send an email every day, and send a text every day. And your face on the other right now does the same thing most dealers do when they're like, oh, my God, that's so much. It's so much contact. But remember, it's about convenience. Then it goes into every third day, and from there you pocket in hot spots that look like this. The first two weeks are extreme. The first five days are super extreme, and it's email, video, text, and phone calls because believe they will call you back. Uh, the other thing I'll tell you, though, is if you do not have a direct line at your desk that dials out and shows on the phone as a direct line, fix it because if you call 50 times and people don't listen to the voicemail and they call back, they'll go, Oh, you're calling back to the dealership. Are you looking for sales or service? Oh, we're looking at a car online. Oh, was it new or used? It was used. Boom, to the sales to the sales floor. Uh, sales, you're the call online one, and not the person who called 50 times. So have a direct line. Make sure it dials out. And if your company won't pay for it, pay for it yourself because it's worth investing in. I can assure you of that. But yeah, I do. Um, I do that that way, and I believe in calling incessantly and texting incessantly and sending email with video for the first two weeks. I would rather, like Danny Zendel said, I would rather lose an opportunity because I excessively tried than miss one because I didn't connect. I agree with that, too. All right. Thank you so much. Great answer to a very broad question, but I think you handled it beautifully. All right, everyone. Um, we still have so many people on the line, so we're just going to keep powering through some of these wonderful questions that came in. All right. Lydia, Lydia wrote in, does Edmonds text us app is that legal? Okay, so this is really good, actually. So Edmunds Texas app started as a company that was a startup a couple years ago called Car Codes SMS. And after vetting a million different products and working at Garber meant that I just did in a lot of attorney meetings for these texting laws because we were a big group and didn't want to violate them. Uh, Edmunds bought Car Codes SMS, and it was only a $100 product before that, and then they made it free. It is my favorite product on the market, not because it belongs to Edmunds, but because it's the one that I vetted and it's the one I've seen used successfully. The other thing I really like about that app, and it does keep you legal, is that it looks like an actual app on the cell phone too. So when the salespeople are using it, it feels to them like they're texting too. And a lot of people will say, well, we have a texting product, but our salespeople are still texting. Uh, that's because they like to text. <laughs> Nothing to do with the customer. Now, the customer might want them to, but that's why they're doing it on there instead of doing it in the CRM where it looks like that. So give them something that lets them feel like they're texting, and it keeps the hyperlink inside of the CRM so that you constantly can read an updated catalog of what was said in case you was a salesperson or somebody's sick, anything happens. But it's inexpensive. It's free as far as I know still, uh, and it's a product that I really like. So yeah, you are covered with that. It does give you the double opt-in product. All right. Thank you so much. Great question, Lydia. Yeah. All right. Um, that is a great question. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, David wrote in, so this is the first time I have listened to Bobby speak, and I can tell you that she is definitely one of my favorites. Great job, Bobby. I love your passion and attitude. You. Not to mention, you clearly know your stuff. Rock star, right? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want you to know, Bobby, I don't know, like a hundred people wrote in that it was a phenomenal webinar, great webinar, awesome information. So I'm just going to let you know that. All right, let's try and get through some more of these comments and questions. All right, Trevor wrote in, that he took three months to close an internet deal. It started June 22nd, 
sold one yes. after showing the eighth vehicle to the, the poor guy on September 22nd, delivered it yesterday. Good yes. job. And yesterday was the first oh, time yesterday? they met. Yes. Yeah. Three months he was in contact with this person. They didn't meet yes. until yesterday. Trevor. Yes. Killing it. <laughs> So I'll tell you. I bet that was so rewarding too. <laughs> no, it is. No, and it is too because it's filling that Ferris wheel. It's everybody else who is willing to say that they give up early. You can pick that up. Good for you, Trevor. Mary, who is probably still on this call, who I adore and has worked with me for a very long time, one time had, and I use this example all the time. She sold a car to a couple where the guy was in Afghanistan seven months after the opportunity came in when everybody told her it wasn't possible. Finally got the guy when he came back in. He was stationed over there. When he came back over, he bought from her because she stayed following up. She kept him in the Ferris wheel, and she made sure that they felt special. And nobody else was willing to do that, like call Afghanistan at like 3 a.m. or whatever. Uh, but it is rewarding. And so go you, Trevor. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Keep it up. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's perseverance. Okay. Um, next question. Oh, Curtis wanted to know that video that you didn't show the whole thing of. Remember that the, I think it was the last video. He said, "Is that video on YouTube?" Yes, actually. So the was that the appointment confirmation? I believe. It I'll was. just tell you what all of them are. Yeah, the appointment confirmation video is uh, if you just go to YouTube and look up Delray Buick GMC. It's a Garber store. They have a series of videos. You'll see hundreds of walk-arounds because they answer every opportunity with a walk-around uh, video, whether it's credible or not or looks great or not. They do that. But it's on that page. And Elise is the one who came in and did that. So I will personally get you a copy if you can't find it. You All you got to do is just shoot me an email or a text. Text is better. Uh, and I'll make sure that you receive what you need. Oh, so nice of you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, uh, William wrote in about the question before. That's awesome for Trevor. I once closed a deal just days short of a year-long follow-up process. Yes. What? These, oh my these are the people that are making people feel special. What William is that? Is it McCormick? Yeah. How did you know? <laughs> because I only surround myself with people who are brilliant because they make me smarter. And William is a very smart guy, and I'm always impressed by the stuff that I read that he posts wow. and that he does. So I'm not shocked at all that that would be his. By the way, um, I also want to let uh, let you know, a lot of people wrote in they loved the idea of the fundraiser for the animal shelter, so a lot of people yeah. love that. And then AJ wrote in, he says, and we get the same response with our fundraiser for Special Olympics. Oh, that's great too. That's oh yeah, that's a like, great one. It's like one of those things that you can't say no to. How can yeah. you? How can you not want to, well, you know? What, what better why buy do you have than being a part of your community because you genuinely care, because you're empowering the people, the people that are special inside of a building that's not, to be a part of something bigger in their community. That is a great why buy for somebody. And the fact that you're doing it not even for that reason is huge. Tie that into your social campaigns. Tie that into your website. And do it all at no charge because you can do it internally and it will make a difference. And I'm serious. If you reach out to me, Mary loves this stuff, so I'm telling you she'd be excited to work with you on it, and she's brilliant, so you'd be lucky to be able to chat with her, too. Yeah, and AJ followed up with, uh, you're so correct, Bobby, it needs to be genuine, and he says if it yes. comes down to you and your competitor in a few months, anyone they talk to will recommend your dealership because of this. So thank you. Yeah. What a great, great idea. Good luck with that, AJ. And um, William McCormick did write in. He says, thank you so much for the kind compliments, Bobby. And uh, Mary also, Mary Lynch wrote in, anyone can reach out to me about it. She's right. I love that stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. Michelle wrote in, how many leads can one person handle in a month? I'm the internet manager and handle all incoming leads and work them for 31 days straight. Then I give them to my assistant who works them from day 31 through day 180. But how many is too many? Good job, bro. Okay, so I'm going to break these numbers down for you because nobody's a real big fan of these ones. If you're a salesperson, no more than 40. That's the max. That means if you're anybody who's going from set to sell, you're carrying the whole thing through. If you're working in a BDC, similar to an internet manager would be if you're the one handling them all, you shouldn't have more than 125. No more than 150 at the very absolute max. And I know many of you are working with a lot more than that. 
But what happens is you don't have enough time in the day. In month one, if you have, let's say you have 60 that you're still trying to contact, what happens when you get to month six at 180 days, and now all of a sudden you have 320 calls a day and you don't have time to get through all that stuff, it's too many. What I suggest you do initially is scale back a little bit of the marketing that you have, and, and that'll sound funny coming from somebody who does marketing, right? But spend that money on the staff and put in the people that you really need. Go to Macy's, right? Go to Macy's and meet one of the perfume girls at the counter or one of the girls selling makeup. They face rejection 500 times a day, and yet they still initiate contact, and they're poorly paid, and they work terrible hours. But you know what they are good at? Customer service. And you can put somebody on a decent pay plan to get them started. You can grow them for the next six months, and then they become a part of your department. Take it out of the marketing plan until you're ready if you're dealing with four or 500 leads, and build a foundation before you decorate your house. All right. <laughs> we have so many people still writing in. Oh my gosh. I don't know how long we can keep this up. All right. Thank you so much for the great question, Michelle. Um, next one. Yeah. Next one comes in. Uh, you know what? John, John uh, wrote in. Bobby, you were too fast for me. I'd like to see that last slide. I didn't see it when I printed it. I was going to take a pic of it. John, I know you're still which on. Which one was it? Yeah, which last slide are you talking about? <laughs> are you talking about Is the, it this one? I don't know. Hopefully John will write back in. Um, John, if you're not getting it right now, you can download. You're going to be able to download this when the link comes through in your email. You can also reach out to me and I'll send it to you. Uh, but either way, we will make sure that you get it. You can grab it out of the dealer on website on the webinar page. You're going to get an email that has a link in it, or you can reach out to me direct and I'll send you the whole presentation. Or you can reach out to me too, but you know, I'd rather talk yeah. to Bobby too. All right. <laughs> John, thank you so much for the question. Um, uh, oh, John says, thanks. I'm going to reach out. Hey now. All right. Thank you. Um, by the way, Viviana from Meadowland wanted me to tell you Hi, she's still here, all right? <laughs> I am proud of you, Viviana. Good job, and I know you were hearing questions and knowing that they're things that we've just talked about too. So Viviana <laughs> is really, really good and an up-and-coming person on dealing with uh, internet leads right now. She works in the BDC and she's amazing. Super sweet girl. I really like her. She says, thank you very much. Um, she said, I didn't get some yeah. of the slideshows either. All right, so... Reach out to Bobby. You obviously know how to get a hold of her. We okay. have to go fast. We're at an hour and a half. I was like, this is crazy. i got to go faster. So, <gasps> sorry, I brought some. All right. We are time. down to our last handful of questions. <clears throat> and they're all still on the line waiting for the answers. You guys rock. I love it. Okay. Kenitra, I'm with you, girl. Here we go. Kenitra says, uh, <laughs> Kenitra wants to know, what does BDC set to sell mean? Kenitra, you are not the only person who actually asked yeah. that question. Okay, so a BDC set to sell means that you've designated. So when I like when I build a BDC or when I start training people on them, I always say first you have your first layer of BDC people who get really good at initiating contact, who are making phone calls and doing everything all day, and they're typically handing off once the appointment shows up, right? So whether that happens on the phone and you're telling them who they're going to work with, which by the way is best practice, or if they're walking in at a certain time, whatever it is. Most BDCs don't then handle the customer. It gets handed off to sell it. A BDC that does set to sell or has hybrid people inside of it hand off to the designated people on their own team that then go out and set them. So I might call, if I'm the person who calls you and the person who closes you, I'm the set to sell. And the best BDCs have a blend of both. There you go. Kenitra, thank you so much for being here today as well as all of our attendees uh, and for the great question. Um, <laughs> oh, Kanisha says thank you so much. All right, Viviana says. You're welcome. Viviana wrote back and she says thanks for everything. It was awesome, but it was like lightning fast. <laughs> it totally was. So much information. By the way, somebody wrote in that it was like information by fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, like. Don't yeah. worry. I wrote back to him and I said, hey, it's okay because you're a rock star and I knew you could handle it. So, all right, next yeah, one. Yeah, you guys can call me. <laughs> I'll walk through it personally with you, too. Okay. Um, Tristan, aw, Tristan, that's my son's name, says, you two are rock stars. We cannot talk about this topic enough. Aww. I just wanted you two to know. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, last couple of questions here. William, 
McCormick wrote in, what is your opinion on round robin or bucket system versus manager sending buyer to someone who they feel might be the best fit? So let me tell you how I feel about managers who pick salespeople. <laughs> uh, this is how it typically goes. Like, oh, everybody's at lunch except for June. She's working with them. Oh, everybody's busy right now except for them. In my opinion, whoever handled that internet opportunity is best suited to choose who they work with. If I engaged you enough to be able to get you to come in as the person who worked with you, and I'm infiltrated into the sales team as one team moving in one direction, then I should know the personalities of the people that are going to be best suited to work with you based on what I learned about you in our conversation. I'm not a fan of managers handing off. Um, I know why they do it, because they say, oh, we don't want to have a handoff. We don't want to do this. Right. I get it. I just don't think that's best practice at all, and I don't think that that's where their focus should be. There's reasons there's specialties in the dealership, uh, and managers handing off typically is not the best one. That doesn't mean there's not an exception to that rule, that you don't have somebody great there, or if your BDC isn't trained or your internet staff isn't trained on the personalities of the other team, you need to fix that crack in the foundation first, but I'm not a fan of that. All right, not a fan. Thank you so much for the question, William. Hey, Bobby, could you go back down to your um, the picture with your headshot on it? Yes. All right. All right. Let's. Oh, wrong, wrong section. There we go. All right. Um, okay. Let's see. Who else wrote in? Uh, AJ wrote in. Yep. One team, one direction. Hence, an internet store. <laughs> All right. And. Yes. Uh, Trevor wrote in. What was the name of that texting company that you had mentioned earlier? Yeah. Uh, so Car Codes SMS is the old name, but Edmonds actually owns the texting company. And remember, uh, I don't ever give referrals on companies as a whole, only on the product. And that product I do, I do like, and I do think it's a good one. All right, Trevor, I hope that helped you out. Clarify and that. I just want to say the last comment that came in is from Chris, and I just want you to know it was shared by many, many, many people. Um, Chris says, only one prize today, but everybody wins with the great information Bobby shared today. And with that, my oh, friend, I, I, I just, I, if there was one word that described today's broadcast, it would be epic. Amazing, epic, you. fabulous. Okay, that's three words, but you know what? I need to have you on my show again <laughs> sometime early 2017. So let's let's make that happen, okay? You are amazing. If you want, take a moment and thank the audience for coming because we've been on for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, yeah, no, definitely thank you. Uh, you know, I started having these conversations with other dealers when my dealer said, I'll pay for one conference a year and the rest you're on your own. So I quickly learned that if I could learn enough and share that knowledge, I could get my conference fees waived and I could network and attend them. I didn't get to where I am now with this knowledge without really doing that networking. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Apply to speak at things. Apply to learn things. Go to networking events. And thank you for sharing your time with me today. I enjoy this a lot, this educational part of what we do. So when I say reach out to me, I mean it. There's no obligation. You can text me anytime. It's the easiest way to get me. Yeah, it's and I'm my not, preferred I'm method. Not and you don't need an option. She's literally She's like, like I waive you from all liability. It's it's it must be she probably is like the coolest chick in the automotive industry. I mean, there's Thanks. Just do it. You'll never regret <laughs> knowing Bobby Heron. Okay, let's put it that way. All right, thank you so much. Audience, right. we're going to be sending you out a link to the recording as soon as I can get it posted online. Also, um, you know, you're going to get an email with that link. You can also check out uh, dealeron.com slash webinar, and it will be posted there within 24 hours. So you can go there. You can check out our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars too. Yes. Uh, whoa, back up, back up. <laughs> Sorry, I hit it too fast. <laughs> this webinar is going to conclude in just a moment. Go back. And when it does, you're going to get a short survey. So fill it out because we're always looking for great feedback from you, and we want to know what you thought of today's presentation. So please make sure you check out that survey. It's six short questions. We would love to have your feedback on this one especially. Also, Dealer on Yes is going to be hosting another Top Golf event. It's going to be in Dallas, Texas on Wednesday, October 5th. It is golf. It is good. Google and it is cocktails. I mean, seriously, that is just a recipe for awesomeness. Hey, Eliana. Yes. Can I come to this event? 
It's free. Of course you can, darling. You just have to I find your way. I think I'm going to go. So I think I'm going to go. So if you guys go, I'll be there and we can chat. Oh, that would be amazing. Yes. As a matter of fact, check out that tiny URL link. Find out more information. Register. It is free. You just got to get your butt to Dallas, Texas on October 5th and enjoy the automotive awesomeness we have in store for you. The last one was so well received. We decided to do another one just a couple months later. So get yourself over there. And yes, it's free. You got no excuse. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer On webinar. It's the Dealer On Academy Q4 Automotive Marketing Briefing, where you can join members of the Dealer On Executive Team to discuss current automotive marketing updates, industry perspectives, and best practices. This is a highly interactive webinar where the majority of the time is dedicated to Q&A from you, our valued audience. The collective knowledge of Dealer On's leadership team includes retail automotive, marketing, technology, and service experience. So don't miss the Q4 Automotive Marketing Briefing with the Dealer On executive team. And I just want you to know, they have some huge things to announce. They're going to be making some, I guess I should say it like Trump, it's going to be huge. <laughs> so don't forget, <laughs> Dealer On's weekly webinars are held Thursday at 12 noon Eastern, 10, I'm sorry, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions regarding the Dealer On webinar series or our topics, contact me directly. I'd love to hear from you. Again, my name is Eliana Raggio. I am everywhere. I'm on all the automotive social networks. I'm on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. You can track me down online. Or you can just email me directly at Eliana at Dealer On. Dot com. I look forward to hearing from you, and I want to thank you all so much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all on another webinar in our continuing education series. Take care.